Why am I saying that? Because what God is doing with us is saying, this is what you are, and this is what you're not. This is what you are, and this is what you're not. The whole journey, if I could summarize our Christian journey, it is, it is escaping the confusion of darkness that makes me want to be something I'm not, that wants me to lie about what I am. God is just saying, listen, if I could just fix this one thing in you, everything else will start to fall into place. So for me, that's been the journey. I remember one time being frustrated in ministry because, like, I'm 60 years old now, but when I was 25, 26, I had all kinds of prophetic gifts. And, you know, people, especially my peers, were, were praising me and saying, oh, you're so great, you know, amazing gifts and everything. And I think, yeah, I agree. <laughs> but then, then I tried to do that ministry, and the church wasn't responding. Church wasn't inviting me to speak at their churches. And I had a choice, either by saying, wait, wait, maybe something's wrong. Maybe, the, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not exactly what I think I am. And I started to deal with that confusion of being called to something versus that being that thing right now, that there's a difference. And the difference is manifested by what the world is saying. Are they responding to you? No, I, I am a princess. I have a billion followers. Yeah, but your Instagram says other than that. What am I? What am I right now? What, what is the metron of my authority? And, I, and I, when I summarize the whole journey, it's God aligning me not to what I was supposed to be 10 years from now or 15 years from now, but what authority do I have right now? That was the hardest thing ever because I lived in a kind of a delusion. We all live in a kind of a delusion. So when I played hockey, for example, I always thought I had a great game. Every game was great. Why? Because I only remembered the tiny slivers of the game. <laughs> right? I don't know. Maybe some of you guys are like that. But, you know, if, when I look back at that three hours of hockey, I only saw that great hit, that assist I got, and that when my coach said, add a boy. But I didn't see when that guy made me look like a fool and deked me out and went in and scored the goal. I didn't see when I was, you know, missed that check. And I didn't see when I wasn't covering that guy. I didn't, you know, I didn't, because, you know, my mind just, Dismiss it. Wow, those are anomalies. Who I really am is that guy I am at the pinnacle of the game, the guy making the star play. That's, that's who I am, and that's all I saw. And as the Lord began to make that clear, I think I started to question, God, what do I see? How clearly do I see? Because it's very easy for me, and I would I'd do this. I started getting mad at the church. I thought, well, what's wrong with the church that they're not recognizing my uh, a prophetic authority? You don't have it. And see, Jesus grew in favor. He grew in favor. He, that means he had less, and then he got more. And how did he know? Because the world around him was responding to that authority. That there's always evidence that, you know, that, 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 uh, that you are what you say you are. When Jesus ministered, you said, well, yeah, they also hated Jesus. Yeah, they hated him, but he had tens of thousands of people showing up in the wilderness when they said he was going to speak. When you announce on Facebook that you're going to speak, how many people show up? Well, I got three likes last week. It was one more than the week before. I got 14 followers on Instagram. And one day, everybody else who's deceived is going to realize who I really am. Can you sing? Oh, my mom says I can. <laughs> 